वेलकम टू हिंदू एनालिसिस ऑगस्ट सेवेंटीन ट्वेंटी एटीन सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी ऑल दीज आर्टिकल्स द फर्स्ट फाइव आर्टिकल्स आर इंटर रिलेटेड टू ईच अदर दीज ऑल आर्टिकल्स आर बेस्ड ऑन द टर्किश लिरा डिप्रिशिएशन एंड हाउ इट अफेक्ट्स द अदर करेंसीज और अदर इमर्जिंग मार्केट इकोनॉमीज करेंसीज सो द फर्स्ट आर्टिकल इज रुपीज लाइट्स टू योर न्यू लो वर्सेज डॉलर सो वी ऑल न्यू दैट ड्यू टू द टर्किश लिरा डिप्रिशिएशन आर करेंसी इज ऑल्सो गेटिंग डिप्रिशिएटेड ड्यू टू द कंटेजियस इफेक्ट सो नाउ इट इज इक्वल एंड टू वन डॉलर इक्वल टू सेवेंटी रुपीज राइट सो नॉट ओनली आर करेंसी इज गेटिंग डिप्रिशिएटेड बट ऑल द इमर्जिंग मार्केट इकोनॉमीज करेंसी इज ऑल्सो गेटिंग डिप्रिशिएटेड सो विच मीन्स द यू एस करेंसी इज कंटिन्यू टू रिलेंटलेसली स्ट्रेंथनिंग अगेंस्ट ऑल द मेजर करेंसीज सो दैट इज वॉट द आर्टिकल suggest so if you ask a question that whether we should worry about this depreciation of our currency or we ignore that then the answer here is if our performance that is if our indian currency's performance against us dollar is going down so now it is going down right it is like 70 rupees per dollar so if it is going down but our dependence of us uh, dollar is increasing it is not going down then it is a major concern that is if our trade repayments and borrowings so all these things are dependent majorly on dollars then it is a major concern for any economy which dependent on dollar so because of the turkish lira depreciation indian currency is also getting depreciated which in in fact widen the trade deficit of our country so trade deficit in the sense a country's uh, trade is in deficit which means we are importing more than what we are exporting but a country should always export more than import that is what a trade surplus but now we are actually in trade deficit so it is also affect the investor sentiment if a uh, economy is fluctuating then it is obviously going to affect the investor sentiment so that is what now happening in our economy so the current scenario what is happening now is the rbi is now trying to rescue the scenario by increasing the rates but it is not increasing using the rate soon it is increasing in a very gradual way stating that the forex which rbi has with it is nearly 402.7 billion dollar so this much amount of forex we are have as of now and this much amount of this is 402.7 billion dollar forex reserves so they are enough to cover about 9 months of import that is what they uh, told actually because we are having now 9 month import of money with us as a foreign exchange reserve so don't worry about it we could manage that is what the RBI stated, but however, there is a decline in the forex of twenty-three billion dollar. So you understand what a forex is, right? So forex is a foreign exchange, which is a basket of currencies, majorly consisting of euro, dollar, pound, etc. So this basket of currencies. what each and every country has its with its central bank similarly rbi is also having this much amount in its forex reserves if in case needed then the rbi is going to release the money from this forex to the people or to the market so that is what this forex aims at okay so but as of now what they are stating is releasing the money to the market to the people that means releasing this forex to the people by getting the money normal currency from the people is going to deplete the reserves because it is not only the depreciation is happening only in our country it is happening in all the emerging economies market all the currencies are getting depreciated so this uh, depletion of our reserves is not going to help so that is what the rbi says so you see here right i mean on 16th august it is nearly like 70.15 uh, rupees per dollar one alternative point of view here is depreciation usually encourages exports it only makes the imports costlier that is all we know but in this scenario whether this kind of depreciation is going to encourage our export that is what we are going to see now so first we have to understand what are the exports that are done that are usually done by our country so exports usually depend on uh, some major things like 40% of our exports is majorly on petroleum and diamonds okay so what we are doing in these cases means if we are exporting petrol in the sense do we really dig out the petrol from here itself and we are sending it back to other countries no it is not like that we are getting the crude oil from other countries we are importing the crude oil we refine it and then we ship them back to the other countries this is one kind of export similarly in case of diamond means we are getting or we are importing the diamonds from other countries we cut them polish them and we ship it back to other countries so we are actually doing services only not we are actually exporting the whole thing from the raw 
raw material till the final product not we are doing here we are just doing the services kind of thing for this 40 percent of export so this one thing you have to keep in your mind similarly 60 percent of our exports are uh, majorly of textiles apparels and leather goods okay so in the, the these are labor intensive industries but here also we are not that much good at because we are having a lot of competition in this sectors we are now losing to bangladesh vietnam because they are giving more cheaper labor than our country so here also it doesn't add much value so the 40 percent of our exports are like services kind of a thing and 60 percent of exports are like we are in a more competition with other third world countries or third countries so what we are now actually good at exporting is only two thing one is pharmaceutical and another one is IT sector so these are the two major uh, industries or departments that we are good at exporting and if we see whether this depreciation that is what is happening now that depreciation is going to encourage our exports in the sense it is not actually going to encourage our export that is what the conclusion here so now we have seen about the exports so let we see about the imports so the second article is India's oil import bill to jump by 26 billion dollar. So what this article suggests is because of the Turkish lira depreciation all other emerging market currencies are getting depreciated. Our currency is also getting depreciated which becomes 1 dollar equal to nearly around 70 rupees. So because of that what happens the import bill of a country in terms of crude oil means so India's crude oil import bill is now jump by 26 billion dollar. We excessively pay 26 billion dollar for the import of the crude oil from other countries. Which means the buying of the oil from the other countries is now becoming costlier which in turn affects the our uh, internal market. In the sense there could be an increase in the retail selling price of petrol, diesel and cooking gas, LPG etc. So it is going to affect our retail currencies or the consumer's price. So what they suggested here is as our country depends mostly on imports for crude oil. Nearly 80% of our crude oil import is from the other countries. The import bill is usually like 87.7 billion dollar. This is what we usually pay. So because we need 220 million ton of crude oil from other country, this is the need at 2017. But now in 2018, our need is increased to 227 million ton. So this CAD, which is the current account deficit of any country, is a major component of trade deficit. So CAD equal to trade deficit plus remittances plus imports or something so it is like uh, the CAD is a major component of trade deficit so CAD is also dealing with the imports and exports if a country's import is more than the export then the CAD which is the current account deficit is getting widened if it is export is more than the import then the CAD account deficit is uh, reducing which means CAD is surplus so the third article is steel imports from Japan and South Korea surge which means we all knew that the US is putting or imposing import duty or tariffs over the steel and aluminium which is like 25% of import tariff on steel and 10% of import tariff on aluminium over Turkey. So which in turn affects the Turkey's export right so it is going to affect the Turkey's export it is not now going to export its steel and aluminium to US so what it is now going to do is it turns its products towards other countries because of the imposition of tariff by US whichever the countries which are getting affected by the tariff now what they are going to do is they are going to export all their steel and aluminium to other countries not to US so because of that wavering effect now our country our India is also getting flooded with cheap steel and aluminium so that is a major concern because if we get this cheap steel and aluminium from other countries it is going to affect our own uh, country's production of steel and aluminium it is going to affect our domestic production of steel and aluminium so what the reason data is India is being hit by a wave of steel from producers of Japan and South Korea so we are getting more cheap steel and aluminium so before what we are getting so now it is getting increased to 15% higher so now we are getting 15% more steel and aluminium from these countries so if you see here we are getting 31% extra steel and aluminium from South Korea and 30% extra steel and aluminium from Japan so because of this in order to control this cheap steel and aluminium import now government is trying to impose safeguard duty in order to control the imports so 
as per the WTO rules, the safeguard means it is temporary restriction, not permanent. It is just a temporary restriction on imports of any products from other country to protect the domestic industry's interest. So in order to protect domestic industry, government is trying to impose this safeguard duty. So that is what this article suggests. So the next article is tea exporters see competitive opportunity in rupee weakness. So we all knew that rupee is getting depreciated. So we already saw that because of this depreciation whatever happening nothing is going to happen in terms of exports but there is one sector which could be exempted from this scenario which could gain from the depreciation which is this tea exporters or tea sectors so what the news here is the Kazakhstan market which is nearly need of 30 million kg of tea leaves is now dominated by African countries which is led by Kenya so now these uh, African countries are exporting more tea leaves to the Kazakhstan market but because of this rupee weakness India is now trying to make use of this opportunity to export most of its tea leaves to Kazakhstan for that in order to ensure that in the backdrop of the rupee volatility the large and the small tea growers packers and the tea brokers of India is planning to meet and have a meeting in Kazakhstan so why because to boost the competitiveness of Indian tea in the global market so they want to make use of this rupee depreciation opportunity in order to increase the export of the tea leaves to Kazakhstan so India's main competitors in the international uh, tea market is mainly China and Sri Lanka and after China and Sri Lanka African countries like Kenya is also major exporters of tea market to other countries so now we are also trying to enter into that circle the next article is India's growth rate forecast for the financial year 2019 is getting lowered so this is what this article suggests so as per India ratings and research which is Indra so it previously forecasted like our growth rate will be nearly around 7.4 percentage but now they revised it or changed it to 7.2 percentage actually they lowered it so why because because of whatever happening in our current economy so one is the elevated global crude oil prices because of the trade war or other external factors and minimum support prices for all the corif crops which is 1.5 times the cost of production of the farmers which is announced by the central government and the raising trade protectionism which is followed by every developed countries and the depreciating rupee which is a recent phenomena and the NPAs or the non-performing assets of the banking sector which is very huge and we are not able to deal with it right so these are all the reasons why the Indra is revised down the India's growth rate from 7.4 to 7.2 percent but let's see whether it is actually going to happen or not so the next article is collection of statistics amendment act 2017 so what this article is this collection of statistics bill is authorizing the center to decide the manner in which the statistical information which is getting collected can be used so how the statistical information which are getting collected from the country how it can make use of that statistical information in the sense the economic demographic social scientific and environmental aspects of data whichever is getting collected from the country they all constitute statistical information so the new bill suggested that these kind of statistical data how it can be used that is decided by the center so that is what this new bill aims at so before how it was like means the original act of 2008 of collection of statistic bill restricted the data that the data should be used only for statistical purposes and not for any other purposes but now it empowers the central government to decide on which the data could be used the very important thing here is this new act is extends the jurisdiction to Jammu and Kashmir also so before the Jammu and Kashmir has its own collection of statistics act 2010 which is a replica of collection of statistics Act 2008 but now this amendment in the collection of statistics it is now extended to the Jammu and Kashmir also which means the, the center is also now having the power to make laws on this union list and the concurrent list of the seventh schedule of the constitution in terms of this statistics related things so one more thing here is this amendment act empowers the central government to make rules on the powers and the duties of a nodal officer who is getting appointed by means of this act so this nodal officer is designated to coordinate and supervise the statistical activities in central government state government and union territory so he is going to take care of all those things